Welcome Wargamers to Upon the Forge. This is Doug with 2 Plus Stuff and this is going to be sort of my ongoing hobby blog. It's something that I've kind of wanted to do for a while. Uh, and there are other channels who do it exceptionally well, um, and so I've kind of taken notice of that. I, I used to think that like if people just followed the live streams, they would know what I was working on. But there's a lot of folks who don't care for that kind of content and are still interested in knowing like what I'm up to, what the direction of the channel and my hobby is, as well as uh, how I paint certain things. And so that is the focus of this show. I hope to have it be every one to two weeks. Uh, we're just talking about all the things that I have painted and then also talking about what I'm going to be painting next so you get a sense of uh, what's going to be on live streams and uh, what uh, tutorials you might like to see, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and dive into this week's Upon the Forge. So we'll start off talking about Warcry. Warcry has kind of taken over my hobby life because uh, I made a promise to my patrons as well as many viewers uh, that I was going to start diving into Warcry battle reports and lore and that kind of stuff. There isn't a ton of lore for each faction like I was kind of hoping there would be in the core book. Um, but uh, regardless, the store, the channel, I should say, is gearing up to do a whole bunch of Warcry stuff. So I wanted to get uh, all the little odds and ends done. Um, two weeks ago, I, well, I guess it was last week, I finished my terrain from the core set, which you'll see in battle reports. But I didn't have the beasts done, and I need these in case I draw any kind of beast card. You know, the, the twist card that makes you use beasts. As well as being able to hire them as Thrall. So, uh, I got these Furies done, uh, and I did them very simply. What you're looking at here is just a whole bunch of washes and a little bit of contrast paint. Uh, where, basically, I washed all the skin in Seraphim Sepia. Well, I thinned out a little bit. Just a tiny little bit uh, with some mixing medium and then uh, went through on the wings I started with wildwood which is the brown contrast paint and went over it with I believe it's flesh terrors red it's kind of the darker red that they have available and that's how you get that reddish brownish hue within the actual skin of the wings um, the beards they all have are gorgrunt of fur the horns are black templar and then when it, that was all done I gave the entire thing bases included a wash in Nuln Oil just to really darken it all down and I think they look pretty gross and I'll actually pull up a picture here uh, so you can see this guy up nice and close and again you can see it's kind of a sickly dirty looking paint scheme which I think it kind of fits them. The bases I didn't put a ton of work into uh, mainly because whatever they're standing on boom it's metal that was quick and easy and if you notice they're basing the actual like bottom of the base uh, that is just Astro Granite with a Null Oil Wash and a dry brush of Old Juan Grey. And so this is going to match all the units that I have where each warband is that same template of Astro Granite, a wash, and Old Juan Grey. But the color of that wash changes warband to warband. So there's kind of a slight hue difference that separates them, uh, which I thought was you know, uh, probably a pretty good way to keep them kind of, you know, paint scheme wise together but also different enough that you can catch them and pick them out across the board. So we'll move on from the Furies and talk about the the blood turkeys, the, the uh, I think they're called Raptorixes, something like that. Uh, these guys were super fun to paint. Um, kind of annoying how uh, it's, it's weird to get paint underneath them if you've already put them on the base, I will say that. So then they all started with Gracier, same as the, uh, the Furies here. And um, their bodies are all washed with a thinned down version of Saigor Brown. Contrast paint, of course, and then the wings. Uh, this is a, a method I've done on the wings for my Corvus Cabal that people seem to like, which is doing just very subtle or simple transitions. Where I started with Gorgrunt of Fur, right where it meets the actual wing, uh, the arm itself, and uh, then I went with Flesh Terrors Red, and then in the middle area, and then at the very, very tip of the wing where it's most red, that is actually Blood Angels Red contrast paint. And uh, what keeps it from having those splotchy lines and that kind of stuff is you work with contrast being very thin and then you do a few dry brushes to kind of blend it all together. So towards the front of the wing where it meets the arm is Jacaro orange dry brushed and then towards the back where it's more red, it's Evil Sun Scarlet. So it's just very simple contrast dry brush, boom, profit. Everything else about the monster is pretty much covered by um, just doing skeletal stuff the way I normally do, like the, the beak and the little um, size that come out of the wings. So very, very simple stuff. Wanted to just kind of move along and same basis. So all the chaotic beasts as their own faction will have the same basing scheme. 
And here's a little zoom in of this guy just to get you another idea of what this looks like. Again, you know, the wings are the dominant feature here. So I figured as long as I did that and made, you know, the, the bone areas nice and clean for the most part, he'll look pretty great. And I think he looks pretty darn good. Now, moving on to kind of the main event. So I did a live stream. Um, oh, I guess it was sometime last week. I'm terrible at time, guys. Uh, um, I sat down with the viewers of that stream and basically we together walked through what the um, the campaign series that I'm going to do for Warcry would look like. And by that, what I mean is, you know, how do we want beasts included? What's the structure of it? What warband? What campaign? Because the chaos specific ones have two campaigns. Many of them do. And so from that, we decided we're going to go untamed beasts and we're going to do the, the dragon hunting campaign, which I'm very excited for, to be honest with you. And so to make that happen, uh, we went ahead and well, I went ahead and painted up my Untamed Beast Warband, which I'm very, very excited about. Uh, it is absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, just the heroic look of everybody is just so crazy over the top. Um, for these guys, again, believe it or not, it's just a lot of contrast and dry brushing. Everything on here is m pretty much contrast with the dry brushing just being highlight colors for the bone which is obviously also for the weapons and then uh, the furs i picked out the furs a little bit that they're wearing across their bodies but everything else for the most part is contrast now if you look at their bases you can see again the astro granite wash and dry brush highlight combination that i talked about but their wash was seraphim sepia so it's kind of that dirty muddy tone to match the earthy colors that i wanted to go for with this warband now moving on to what the heroes look like. This is like the more elite, you know, dudes in the army, I suppose you would say. Uh, obviously we got our big boss right there, front and center. The skin tones I was able to achieve. Uh, the boss holding up the the great big, you know, jaw axe right there. Uh, he is just Gilliman Flesh, pure and simple. Kept it as easy as it could be. Uh, next to him to the right, that Dark Flesh is actually a two to one mix of the contrast medium and Sigor Brown. And I have found that that is the best way to get dark flesh done. Um, one thing to note is that thinning it down is super important. If you look at the guy on the left, who's holding the two handed sword down at his feet, you see how they're so dark. They're almost like, they look like dead flesh kind of thing. Like not what I was looking for at all. That's when it's not thinned down. So I actually did that sort of just as a way of showing you. But if you thin it down, and look at the guy who's holding the spear. You can see the muscle detail. It shades really well. Absolutely love it. And then on the far right, holding the battle axe, uh, that is Fire Slayer flesh, just to give a nice tanned tone. Good contrast to, you know, generic white guy holding boss axe uh, towards the left side. And I kind of zoomed in on him here a little bit. I haven't quite finished him, like his little chaos star in his horns, uh, as well as um, I want to do some like purple effects to that scar he has on his leg. Uh, but for the most part, he's, he's, you know, he's pretty much battle ready at this point for me anyway. And, uh, we'll see what his story is as it unfolds within the campaign. And so transitioning from stuff that I did complete. So that's everything I did, right? That's the beast, the untamed beasts. Um, and now I'm going to talk about what I'm working on. So things you're going to see on the stream here pretty soon. Uh, the gloom spike gets, uh, next war band that I want to paint. Um, mainly because I played against them and they absolutely kicked my teeth in. And so they're kind of in a weird state right now. I was kind of going for a scheme where they had blue robes and it just didn't like it. So I was like, you know, what? let's just back up. I painted all the robes black again. Uh, and then I'm going to go from there. So um, it's, they still need to be washed. Uh, the bases are obviously far from being done and, um, pretty much just starting from here. So what you can tell from what I need to do actually is just do a lot of highlighting on the robes, uh, a little bit on the skin and the teeth and stuff like that, pick those out, uh, as well as do everything but the red on the squigs. I'm actually happy with that red. It doesn't look quite as uh, bright as it does on this camera, but I'm happy with them. And to complement this group of gits, I have a box of squig hoppers. And so for these, um, I'm not, I'm going to build them this week. I don't know if I'll be able to get them fully painted because it really depends on the weather for priming. Um, but I plan to get them all built. And what I'm going to do is build it so that I have uh, a champion for squig hoppers and a champion for boing crop bounders is my hope. 
and then from there do a mix of all the rest. I probably have like four of each just to give me a good wide, you know, uh, pool to draw from when it comes to adding units together with the gloom spike kits in the previous picture. That's the thing is like I don't really want to go hard and heavy into gloom spike kits. Buy a bunch of kits to get like the, the stabas and all that kind of stuff. I think this will give me enough entertainment to get a sense of the warband, and I'm happy with that. And after that comes the Savage Oryx. So these are awesome. <laughs> um, basically, I'm drowning in, in orcs right now. I have uh, the, these 20 will bring me up to 42 left to do. Uh, and that includes, what, the 40 something I already have done. So basically, I needed this last box of Savage Oryx uh, to make my cunning ruck. And so. If you don't know, I, I am absolutely enthralled with the War Clans book. I love it so much. But right now, all I own are the Iron Jaws. And so what I'm doing is slowly painting up a Savage Orc army because I, I really want to do the Big Wall and I want to do Savage Orcs. I like the Iron Jaws. They're very straightforward. But uh, I think the rules and stuff just seem so crazy fun that they're hard to ignore uh, on the other side. So, um, yep, I got to build and paint uh, 20 more. So I have 20 arrow boys built and primed right now, so you might see those as well. Uh, but it's just a slow slog getting through this. And I think that's honestly why I've needed the break for, for Warcry stuff, right? Painting all that up. Because you feel like you're getting progress done really quickly, and then you go on to something like the Savage Orcs, and everything feels very grindy very quickly. It slows all the way down. So it's been good. Uh, I just have a lot more to do with them. Now, uh, last little thing I want to note here is uh, kind of a preview for upcoming uh, product review. So I was sent a two sets of terrain from uh, Terrainheim, and um, it's a company down in Australia that makes MDF terrain. And I absolutely love them, uh, and I'm just going to throw a few pictures up here and have some video rolling here. And this is this is footage that and pictures that I'm taking from uh, a review that I'm going to do later on. But basically, I built this MDF terrain. And then today I went, I was able to go out and prime it. I had good priming weather. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to prime up. I know it's gray on gray. I apologize for that. But the one set, and there's two of each of these things, is a set of like Realm Gate style things. Uh, they look pretty cool. I think I like them more almost as a, like an altar than I do like a Realm Gate. Because they're not quite as tall. The doorway isn't as big. Um, but I do like the actual sculpt. And so basically, um, I wanted to show folks what it looks like when you prime it. But now that it's primed, I'm going to go ahead and paint it up and add a bunch of stuff like skulls everywhere and like grizzly trophies and blood effects. You know, I'm going to like make it look cool, right? More than just um, very straight edged. It looks too clean in my taste right now. Um, but yeah, overall, I think they were a really fun build. Um, the next one here is the Watchtower which uh, you're playing, I'm playing footage for right now, and it is cool as all get out. Um, you can see the, all the ridges and stuff like that are super well defined. It's a great kit, and I'm excited to use it in Warcry. It's a lot of multi-level stuff. You can pull people off buildings. Absolutely, absolutely love it. So uh, you will be seeing this in, um, in the review as well as Warcry uh, battle reports in the future. So. Um, very cool stuff. You'll see the in-depth versions of those in my review. I might show them again as I'm painting them, but uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, that is what's going on with me. So friends, thank you for hanging out for a little bit and watching the first episode of Upon the Forge. And so again, if you are interested at all in seeing me paint these things, I do live streams every Friday. I shoot for 11 to 11.30 barring something coming up like they're doing construction outside my window it's be too loud that kind of stuff uh and then throughout the week when i have time i do flip on the camera i don't have a, a hard set streaming time yet i'm still working on that uh, but that's if you just want to see me painting it uh, otherwise you can tune in regularly and i'll show you what we were able to complete uh, from the previous episode. So thank you all so much for watching. Leave comments down below if there's any of the models that I showed that you want a tutorial for because this week I'm actually, I've already placed the order on Amazon uh, for an entire new setup with desks and um, another web, uh, another camera to be able to record tutorials more accurately and show off stuff in live time. So I don't know, there's all kinds of stuff coming up the pipeline. Let me know what you're excited for and I will get it done. So thank you all so much for watching and happy Wargaming.